So please give him a warm welcome and I'll hand over to Matt to introduce himself a bit more. So, so this is a bit weird for me because I've never in my life stood on a stage in front of uh, people. And uh, I was walking around here and the guy at the back there at the camera said, stand on the stage. I was like, oh God, do I have to? And I don't know if it's going to hold my weight. Anyway, hello, I'm Matt Barnaby. Um, some of you look vaguely familiar. The second line from the back, were you at Agile and City this year? Guy with a beard and the glasses. Were you guys at Agile and City? Yeah. <laughs> guess not, guess not. Damn it. I was going to say, if you've seen this talk already, I'm really sorry. Um, so I might as well get started. So um, I work with a company called Basis. Um, and we work purely with, the, uh, with service organisations, uh, local and central government. And uh, we help them tackle their messy problems, essentially. We, uh, we deliver projects that aim to improve the lives of uh, vulnerable adults, the elderly in our community, uh, improve outcomes for young people uh, at risk in our community. And we do some really non-sexy projects around kind of highways planning and that sort of stuff. Um, and that's, and that's kind of uh, the, the, the world that I work in. I don't work in IT. I don't work in software. You were talking about technical debt just then, and I was sitting there going, oh, I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna go on now. I can't have a conversation with these guys. I, I don't know what they're talking about. So let's give it a go. So some of you worked in public services, some of you delivered projects in public services. So this isn't gonna be uh, uh, new to you guys. So if you haven't, doing change in public services traditionally is like walking through treacle. Is that fair to say? Because you've got this, you've got varied and complex services, tr traditionally structured pro uh, um, services. And as we know, we read in the paper day in, day out, reducing budgets and shrinking teams. And this is against the background of constant change and constant fluctuations in demand from what our, what our customers need and want from us at all times. So delivering change is not easy. On top of that, oh no, it's on the wrong side. I've got to change side stage. Um, uh, on top of that, they have to deal with services that still work in silos, still don't talk to each other. This is my world. Go away, leave me alone. Political worries and pressures, as we know, there's quite a few of them around at the moment, but let's not go there. And of course, they're delivering services to some of the most vulnerable and excluded members uh, of our society. And on top of that, when it comes to change, Bear in mind, we're talking social workers, we're talking uh, staff that sort of uh, uh, deal with vulnerable people. They have to deliver real hard cash savings that have real clear benefits for residents. And on top of that, quite often, this is just a bolt on. They still have to do their day job. They still have to do the stuff that they got into this industry for in the first place. It might be a bit rose-tinted glasses for me to say, but um, most people that get into things like social care, things like that, they got into it because there's, there's a heart in it and they got into it because of that reason. Doing this doesn't always, always translate, and it's not easy for them. And it quite often feels like this. Um, bleak, right? This is going to cheer up, trust me, it'll cheer up. Uh, um, it feels a bit bleak. This is a real sort of a traditional uh, uh, feature that we, uh, common feature that we use, because it's how it feels in public services quite often. You know, the waters are rising, they're isolated. At any point now, it's going to spill over. And no one's throwing them life jackets. No one's, no one's sending the rescue boats out. And um, it's sometimes how it feels for me as well. Now, anyone who knows Mad Comics knows that this guy's ginger as well. And that wasn't intentional when I was doing these slides. Uh, um, sort of standing there, sort of doing that. This is how it feels for me sometimes. It feels like I'm just plugging the holes before the whole dam falls down. And it might feel a bit critical to you guys, but... Um, this is the public services in my background. I'm not, like I said, I'm not uh, 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 traditionally from a project management background. I, I'm, uh, I'm 41 now. Um, and I left school at 16, started working in youth services, working with young people and families that have been excluded from school, have been in trouble with police, uh, you name it, you name it, you name it. And uh, about, I um, can't think how long ago now, about 10 years ago now, I was asked to... Um, leave public services and join a consultancy firm called Cognizant. Does anyone know Cognizant? Yeah. Uh, they, they, they owned a spin-off company at the time called PIPC, who had a government uh, uh, department. And I was asked to go and work with them as the ba in, to help out on the Baby P response. Anyone knows about Baby P? Big tragedy uh, down in Harringay. And so I did. 
So I was seduced by doing something worthy and uh, also as well the lure of uh, project management because in my naive mind it was something bold and sexy to do in central London. Uh, little did I know. Uh, um, so it was great. So I did, I did some good things. I was, I was part of the team that helped to develop the step up to social work, which is a response to baby P in terms of you can't train in, in, in rural Cornwall and go and work in Harringay and expect to be okay. You think it's common sense, but there you go. Uh, then the critical spending review happened and all the government projects dried up. Has anyone experienced been around in those days? It was really busy and then all of a sudden everybody just went and I was working, I was employed by Cognizant at the time, and they sort of said, look, Matt, you know, you've got to earn your keep. You can't be on the bench. What, what does that mean? I'm new to all this. And uh, I spent two years on the Lloyd's HBOS merger. <laughs> Weird, right? I'm a social worker by trade, and I was on the IT live trials merger for Lloyd's HBOS. I was a principal planner uh, um, in what can only be described as a bomb shelter on the South Bank. And it was great. It was great. It was really good. For the first couple of years, for the first couple of months, I learned a lot about kind of uh, project management methodology, uh, uh, got into it really kind of, you know, it was my thing. You know, I did the typical junior consultant things, fell in love with Visio. Oh, it's brilliant. And MSP and moving stuff around. It was great. So I started reading. I started exploring kind of maybe, surely, all this is, is an industry of change. It's an industry of project management. Surely somebody out there is doing something that actually does lead to some kind of change. And, you know, that's why I'm here, right? It's, it's, I discovered iterative ways to change, agile service design, and so on. And uh, started to play around with the concept, started to play around with the idea, fell out of love with financial services, as you can imagine, and I actually quit. I actually quit and said, you know what? I, I'm, I can't do this anymore. It doesn't feel good. So I left, and, uh, and I said that I was going to only do public service projects from now on. And that's what I've been doing ever since. Sounds all nice and moral, right? Still, earn, still, still need to earn some money out of it. But, but, the, but the thing is, I felt the pain. Uh, I felt the pain of public services, and I want to do something good with it. Um, and I'm waffling now, so I want you to feel some of the pain. I don't know how this is going to work out. There's much more people than I thought there was going to be, so I need you to be a little bit brave and trust me a little bit. So I need two identical lines that will literally snake around this room. So if it's me and you, for example, can you stand up a second just as a volunteer? Just stand there like this. You have to find a partner, stand there like this. You don't have to play, you might lose some clothing. But if you do play, I really appreciate it. So stand there like this. Can you do that? Good, thanks. So form a line that sort of snakes round, so you're opposite a partner. It's not gonna be me and you, I'm not playing this again. If there's not enough room to stand in the lines, you might have to go here. So snake up that way as well. Snake up around the, into the corridor if you need to. Actually, being on stage is now quite handy. So, has everyone, has everyone got a partner? Has everyone got a partner? Good. Good. And everyone volunteered. Thank you. I appreciate it. So, what I want you to do is, for 10 seconds, it's not long, 10 seconds, in complete silence, study your partner. <laughs> silence, <laughs> silence, and stop. Oh, that was tough, right? 10 seconds. So, um, so you've done it, everyone has studied their partner? Right, now everybody turn back to back. So literally just on the spot where you are here, turn back to back. No cheating, no nothing. Right, now all I want you to do it's really easy, is make three changes to your physical appearance. All of you, go. When you're done, look at me a bit lost as if to say, why the hell did I do this? Uh, and, I'll get the, and I'll get the hint. So good. When you've made those three changes to your physical appearance, some people are still moving. So good. Turn around, face your partner, spot the differences, put your hand up when you're done. Definitely got, we got a winner, we got a winner. Yes. So, stop, stop, stop. Some of you did it. I'm not gonna give you much time because you talked about technical debt. So stop a second, stop a second. Without undoing any of those three changes, turn back to back. 
without undoing those three changes, make three more. Come on. I'm in the, this is an agile community. Let's go. <laughs> Brilliant. It's definitely, it's definitely a change. Right, so have you done? Turn around. No, not yet, not yet. If, you, if you've not done, sorry. Right, turn around, face your partner, find the additional three changes. Stop, stop, stop. Without undoing those six changes, turn back to back. This game's called three times three changes. Turn back to back and make three more changes to your physical appearance. I've got nothing left. I'm only desperate. <laughs> yeah, we might need to do this quick. Somebody might faint over here. So, when you've made those additional three changes, turn around, face your partner, spot those train, uh, changes, put your hands up when done. And next, no, no, you can sit down now. <laughs> so, whilst, whilst you're sitting down, whilst you're getting comfortable again, and whilst I'm kind of um, stealing your watches, um, a couple of questions, really. How did it feel to study somebody you may or may not know particularly well for that period of time? Awkward. A bit creepy. Yeah, any other takers? Yeah, awkward, creepy. Did anyone find it quite uncomfortable to have a, a stranger? Just, yeah? Okay, that's interesting. Um, what changed from the first time? No, I don't mean in what did you do. Uh, um, what changed from the first time to the last time? So, um, first time I asked you to make three changes, how easy was it? Second time around, how was it? Third time around, how was it? Okay. <laughs> Embarrassing. <laughs> so from the first to the last, what had to change in your thought process? You had to look at their genitals more at the end. <laughs> yeah? You have now just become the example I use next time. So I was going to tell you, I, I did some work with Crossrail, and I did this game, and one of the, 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 the manager of the uh, station manager Sort of 80 odd kind of blokes in a room played this game, and the station managers went like that on the first go. <laughs> grab, grab too much material. <laughs> and that's the story I normally tell. It's now you. It's now you. So, 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 what happened from the first time to the last? So, it's easy to find it last time, got progressively harder. So, how, what did, how did you adapt to meet my requirements? Pardon? Okay. Less inhibited. So, anything else? Pardon? The changes got bigger. Yeah, yeah. There was people down there. There was people. <laughs> there were people down here that were kind of swapping clothes. They were swapping clothes. Remember, I was saying about working in silos. They were swapping clothes, and, and, and they actually had to turn to each other and get creative around how they change. So, how easy was it to spot changes first time around? Yeah, this one does tend to split the group. Did it get easier or harder, do you think? Uh, okay, good. These are all good answers. Because we play that game for this reason. This, does this look familiar to any of you lot? Salami slicing. So it's chorizo slicing. This is changing my whole script. Uh, um, it's chorizo, it's chorizo uh, slicing. This is what public services do. I don't know uh, what you've done in your public service uh, world uh, that you've worked in before, but like I said, I was in children's services originally. A lot of that is a statutory, right? You don't have to do it by law. So when somebody comes and says, make a change, make a cut, do something different, they just look around and go, don't need to do that anymore. Just get rid of it. Sack some people, it'd be all right. And they keep doing it. You know, we're at 40% saving targets in the UK now. 40%. I was out in Oz a couple of years ago, and they were freaking out that they might get a freeze at some point, right? 40% savings. The NHS are doing this, public sector quite often, they just, they just keep hacking away. And that's why we play this game, so you can experience a little bit. Because when change happens, people, people like us, consultants, change people, walk into the public service and just, so what do you do? How do you do it? How can you be optimal? How can you maximise your output? How can we restructure your team so it's cheaper, but you're still doing the same demand? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then it's awkward and it's painful for a public sector organisation, people that care about their work, to experience in that, to experience that. But first time, change is fairly straightforward. Make some changes. All right, I'll take my shoes off. 
Second time around, well, it's getting a bit weird. I take my belt off. Third time around, you want to leave me alone, mate. So it's, it, it kind of it gets progressively harder. So public service organisations at the moment are in a position where they are either, <laughs> either freaked out by change and thinking you're weird, mate, go away, or they're having to be creative. They're having to adapt. And that's where... Uh, um, that's what I'd like to give you an example of. So now I'm getting to the content. But, um, but that's, that's what I want to talk to you about. So you've got two choices, really. You can sort of give up or do something differently. And this is why I love agile. This is why I love adaptive change. This is why I love service design. Traditionally in public services, you say stuff like this, and they sort of go, that's a bit woolly, or it's a bit techy. They're coming round to the idea. They are. Uh, and I want to give you a bit of an example of one. So. Um, as I've said, children's services, this is quite a, a personal thing for me. So imagine this, large organisation, Hillingdon Council, West London near Heathrow, massive place, Boris Johnson. Anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, um, um, seven separate teams responsible for investigating all forms of antisocial behaviour, including uh, uh, graffiti, fly tipping, uh, abandoned vehicles, noise nuisance, street drinking, you name it, you got it, right? There was a major piece of work, so Hillingdon Council couldn't understand what was going on. We're getting all these calls. Our demand has gone up tenfold in the last six months. Our processes are complicated. Our services are fragmented. You don't talk to you, and you don't talk to me. This is, IT isn't integrated. You've worked in this world. You know that's always the case. Team was demoralized, no holistic view of problems, and it was difficult to intervene and prevent early. So they approached us, me, and a few of my colleagues and said, help what can you do and so um so we sat down we thought about it we tried to pull on sort of different uh, approaches that we would take and said right well let's let's try this and that's what i'm going to show you about so um that was meant to change <laughs> so this was our approach it was in six six key points really and then we'll go through them uh, as, as we go through first is that we had to recognize that we deal with complexity the second was that we needed to change the fundamentals of change in public services, especially in this, uh, especially in this focus here. We had to involve people who felt the pain. We had to involve people that felt the pain, and we needed to start prototyping quickly. We needed to start doing something quick so you could see it. Focus on, uh, uh, focus on uh, practical behavioural change and move uh, uh, um, uh, um, into sort of self-management self of teams. So... That was kind of uh, uh, um, um, our approach overall. So I'm going to break it down for you a little bit. So recognising that we deal with complexity. Um, as far as I'm concerned, well, you know, this is, you know this stuff, right? I'm not preaching to the converted here. Three common types of change. Simple, complicated and complex. Now, it's the public services attitude, often historically, <coughs> that they deal with this. So simple is... Um, walking from Marble Arch to Tottenham Court Road down Oxford Street. It's a straight line. You're probably going to have people walking at different paces and going in different directions, but you know how to do it, right? Complicated is an English person riding a bike in Amsterdam. If anyone's done that, you know you're playing with your life a little bit, right? Because they come out of everywhere. Uh, by the way, I run this company with a Dutch guy, so I'm not being prejudiced into us. Uh, we've done this slide together. They come out of everywhere. There's trams, there's people that know how to cycle. I didn't. Uh, uh, and, it's, and it's complicated. But you can still get there. Your A to B point is still roughly going to be in the same place. But what is complex is driving a car around Cairo. So uh, I was talking to somebody the other day, and they were saying it was really bad when Murbeck was in power because um, he was paranoid that somebody was going to sort of shoot him. And uh, so, what he, so what he did was he, to get from the palace to the airport, he would shut down roads. And he would just fly through the roads as quick as possible to get, just so in case anyone wanted to take him out. And so driving around Cairo was, in, Cairo was impossible because you couldn't say, oh, I want to get to that place there. You had to get into a taxi. You had to say, where am I going? The taxi driver would drive two blocks, stop, look around, get out of the car, ask somebody, and they'd say, I'll go that way. And they would turn, and they would turn, and they would turn. So it was a very complex uh, uh, system to navigate. Public sectors work in that. Public sectors work in that. Human beings are not simple. Well, <laughs> human beings aren't, en masse, aren't simple. 
They're very complicated, but they're also massively complex. If you're going to do real sustainable change, you have to recognise that you're dealing with a complex system. You can't put a plan in place and just go, that'll work. You have to be able to adapt to that. So I've kind of rattled through this a little bit. Public li frontline public services are facing massive changes lately. A lot of it is down to progression in sort of software, AI, and stuff like that. More policing, uh, so going from policing to prevention of community solutions, uh, technology products to sort of customer inquisitiveness, uh, uh, fixing ill people to promoting healthy people, catching criminals to preventing crime, retribution to rehabilitation, making you pay to helping you make pay, helping you make whatever that says, <laughs> make you pay your way. So I was talking, uh, and we do some uh, quite often. We do some work with uh, uh, GDS guys. And this is basically kind of the, the, their biggest thing at the moment around kind of, you know, how do we move from this sort of world to this? It's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a complex thing. So the second point uh, in our approach was about changing the fundamentals. This is going back to my experience in financial services where they went, just use Visio and MSP and you'll be fine. Uh, uh, um, it's, it's changing, the world's changing. You know that, that's why we're all here, right? Quite often... Public services historically would go with this programmatic change, where sort of you're managing from the top down. The emphasis is on kind of um, structure and systems, standardisation, best practice, whatever that is. Uh, process, you know, waterfall design of change. Let's do this, let's do this, and hope nothing changes. Performance management, performance indicators. It cripples organisations, cripples them, and, 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 and they feel it every day. And use of consultants as well. Bear in mind, is what I do for a living. Uh, consultants as experts. You know, you've got, you can't do change in public services like this. This, dealing with the complexity and changing the fundamentals, is a much more uh, a, a productive way to do it. And it's adaptive. Encourage participation from the bottom up. Set purpose, challenge, boundaries, and coach. Instead of, uh, instead of working on structures and standardization, think about innovation. So quite often uh, in the historical projects, you would go in and you'd do a process improvement project. And they'd say, oh, yeah, it's lean. Just, no, it's not. It's just you're just not doing that anymore and doing that instead. Uh, um, so why don't you just not do it at all and do something different and see what happens? Uh, um, experiment and evolve. This is where the agile stuff kicks in, right? About kind of, let's try it out. Let's learn. Just get feedback and find out what happens. Motivate through sense of purpose. I was talking to a guy earlier on. I don't know where he is now. He was over there, uh, and he was really into sort of Dan Pink and stuff like that. Give people a sense of purpose. You know, take some of the worries out of the way. Give them, give them the reasons that they got into this work in the first place and meaning again. And don't use consultants as experts. Get consultants in as facilitators, as, as, as the people that, uh, uh, you know, that kind of uh, rugby scrum master video with uh, 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 Jeff, uh, where he's kind of saying, you know, making the tea, giving people back rubs. Don't do that. But, uh, um, but also, you know, be subservient and be a bit of a pusher. So third, involve the people that feel the pain. So this is, so the famous saying is, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem, right? This, this, this guy, Bill Torbett, turns it on his head a little bit when it comes to change and says, if you're not part of the problem, you can't be part of the solution. So this, for me, harks back to sort of getting external people in to study you for 10 seconds and go, I know what to do. It's not going to happen. The, in public service organisations, the best people to influence, drive and sustain change is the people that are feeling the pain of it. So consultants, people like us going in and facilitating change, need to be aware of that and take them with us. And start prototyping early, it's my favourite bit. You only understand a system once you start to change it. You know this, you know, how many organisations have you gone in before, project plans in place, it's slipped, but that's okay, it's a good plan. So no, you need to start messing around with stuff. You need to start breaking bits off and going, what if we didn't do that? What if we cancelled all your board meetings on your change programme? See, so you really complained, because no one really wanted to turn up anyway. See what happens, yeah? See what happens when you break things. Because if you're using an agile approach, it's not going to be long, you can fix it again, or you can get quick feedback about how you can improve it. You only understand a system once you start to change it. So this leads me into prototyping. And this is what we do. This is what we did on, on this project in Hillingdon. We created this sort of model uh, uh, around, and you know, this is going to be familiar to many of you, it's a service design type approach. But this bit here, we built in a sort of sense of uh, um, prototyping as an emergent thing. 
So instead of going stop, start, new world, which is painful, we actually decided that what we we're going to do is, in a very traditional way, work in very short sprints, identify the clear need from a customer perspective. What do they want? What are people feeling out there in, in, in society? Observe and empathize with the service and with customers. Uh, uh, I've done a piece of work recently around homelessness in, in Bexley, and we spent time in, uh, in the reception area where people were coming and sort of claiming homelessness, talking to them. Uh, um, you develop your hypothesis, you prioritize, you start to develop a bit of a backlog. We've learned all this stuff. What can we do about it? We can't do it all now. So what is important? What is impo so you start to develop a nice backlog that gives you an idea. And out of that, you prioritize, and then you start to prototype very quickly, very small. So you take a slice of a service. So what I mean by that is, uh, uh, in this instance, I'll, I'll go on to a slide in a minute, but in this instance, what we've done is we got one person from five teams, one, one person from each team, five teams, and we said to them, okay, next time the phone rings, we are gonna prototype a new process, a new way of working, a new attitude to this on these five postcodes in Hillingdon only. Everything else can go back into the call center. But we're just gonna try this out and see what comes in. We're gonna manage the demand and try it. And by doing this small slice in iterative sprints, prioritizing each time based on the feedback and the outcome of the work that came before it, we were able to bring about quite quickly a new process, a new way of working that was quite innovative, quite different. And what happened was, every time we took an extra slice of the service, new person from that team came on board, and then another person from that team came on board. Slowly, the team took over. The prototype team took over the BAU, business as, the business as usual. And there were less people doing the old way of working than the new way of working. No one had a restructure. No one uh, um, had a new job description. No one complained because they all liked it. And things changed. Things change, and it got quicker and quicker and quicker. And then through coaching, coaching, we were able to help them adopt it by actually teaching them what we did, and then just saying, right, now you go and do it with that service over there. So that's what we do. That's what we do. Um, and the outcome, uh, a, a number of outcomes on this um, uh, uh, antisocial behavior one was we started, we started prototyping from three, only three days in. So that discovery period on that sort of uh, service design thing was literally a couple of days. We think we know enough. We think there is a problem. You think there's a problem. Let's just work on that problem. We'll see what we learn. So we've done that. Uh, um, we've done, we, this is what I said about filtering off a few postcodes, taking a slice of the service. So we're working on real things in real time, but not breaking the service, because you don't want to cause pain to the system. First call that's came in, turns out that all five teams had knowledge of the background, but none of them had ever spoken about it. This, this issue that was going on, you know, like whack-a-mole? This, this person, this family, kept popping up in different areas for different reasons, and they just hit it down, popped up, hit it down, popped up. And it, the phone rang, and it was this case, and they sort of went, are oh, you fucking on it? Me too. What can we do to solve this problem for that family? And so, inevitably, things happen. What was interesting, this is what I've made a note here to put confession, at the first sprint review, we invited in the, the, the local police force, and uh, there was a conversation around kind of why has demand gone up in the last six months? We can't understand why demand in this certain area for this certain reason has gone up so dramatically in six months. It's on our backlog. We want to sort of tackle it, but we're not sure how. And this uh, police officer went, ah, I think I might know what it is. He said, why is that? And he went, well, six months ago, <laughs> we were having a lot of phone calls about vandalism in that area, and it was taking too much of our time. So we turned the phone off. And, uh, uh, and, so, and so the demand had just shifted through. So the police, right, you're now in on this prototype. You have to work with us on this. So eventually the, post guy, uh, the, the, the prototype grew, took in, all the, pro, uh, took in the, all, the, all the postcodes, and it became the business as usual team, which was the thing I showed you. In that project, there was around uh, uh, 0.5 million pounds of saving. But in terms of the wider transformation in Hillingdon, by coaching people on this process to facilitate their own change, they went on and created their own kind of uh, approach to transformation and contributed to around 30 million pounds of savings over about three years. <coughs> really quite impressive stuff for, for, for these guys to do it. We've not gone back since. I don't know if they hate us or we've done a great job. Either way, I'm going to take the great job bit. But, um, but that's, that's, that was the outcome of that. By following uh, attitudes and, uh, 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 and ways of working that you guys do day in, day out in your world. Um, lastly... Um, 
we focused on practical behavior for the whole thing. This is uh, uh, Rick Torseth, a friend of ours, uh, um, who uh, coined, I think might, we must, might have been in a pub one day, it's easier to act yourself into a new way of thinking than think yourself into a new way of acting. That's what underpins our approach to change. So uh, um, we go in with that attitude to things and get people doing it uh, uh, and, and making change very quickly. And that's, and that's essentially how I use Agile. Uh, um, and it incorporates service design and all different elements. I'm not, you know, you might have guessed, I'm not pure when it comes to Agile. You're talking about technical debt and stuff like that. Don't know. But, uh, um, but I kind of know enough of stuff, right? I know enough of stuff to maybe do some good, and it feels good. And surely that is what Agile is about, right? It's just, just know enough stuff and give it a go. Uh, 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 and you learn on the way. I was, that guy that I was talking to earlier on was talking about Dan Pink. He was talking about Maslow and all that sort of stuff, and it was like, well, this is an education, so it was really good. So, but I'm going to quickly uh, test you on this. It's easier to act yourself into a new way of thinking and think yourself into a new way of acting. Unfortunately, you can't all play because there is not enough space. But I need the first, the first three rows to sort of take over this space. And you lot can stand up and watch. Come up, but come over. No, there will be no losing clothing. There will be no losing clothing. Well, you can if you want. But, but I've, not been, I've not been to the gym for a few years. All over, all over. Spread out. We might be able to get some more in. Uh, you three as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So this this really pisses managers off in 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 organisations when we play this game because the point of it is to expose kind of that you don't need them. Uh, so what I want you to do is is in is anyone a manager? Yeah, a lot of you, right? No, good, good, <laughs> safe. So in complete silence. Don't give anything away. I want you to choose two people in this group. So if it's me, for example, I might choose you and you. Simple. So choose two people. Just, 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 just in your head, just go, I'll choose that person, that person. Yeah, you done? Now, this is the challenge. What I want you to do is, I want you to, in complete silence, move equal distance between those two people. So, for example, if I've chosen you, you two guys, right? I am roughly now equal distance to the both of you. If you move over there, I might have to move a bit. Yeah, I might have to move as well. Now I'm roughly the same. All right, but now I'm roughly the same. Now I'm roughly the same. Do you get the idea? So what I need you to do is, is get into a position where you are all at equal distance from each other. So what time is it? 22, so you need to be at the pub for nine. So, how long do you think it will take you to, as a whole group to get equal distance from each other? Infinity. Infinity, no, okay. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Uh, so, we've got some extremes going on. <laughs> we've got some extremes going on. 30 seconds, 30 seconds to infinity. It's equal from your two picked people, isn't it? Pardon? It's, not, it's equal from it's the two people you picked. It's equal distance. Equal distance from the two picked people, yeah. There is a thing, don't try and stand too much in the middle of them because it will just turn into this massive group hug. <laughs> and, I, and I know you guys know each other well, but, you know, maybe not that well. So, so infinity in 30 seconds. Roy, can you time this? Uh, yeah, so I've got a really old question. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I've got my phone. i Use the sp only the space that you've got, so don't go past this sort of boundary here. Use the stage, use wherever. Um, and I need you to stand at equal distance apart from each other, so, like this, yeah? So equal distance, but don't let on who it is and don't find out. So how long do you guys think it's going to take? Anyone, any takers? 30 seconds, infinity, got any mirror in the middle, maybe? You're more at the infinity end of the scale. You're more at the infinity end of the scale, okay? You ready? I'm ready to go. Go. No. Looks like. <laughs> Stop. 
Looks like we're there. How long did that take? 47 seconds. 47 seconds. Brilliant. Thank you. Sit down. <laughs> <laughs> I trust you. Besides, you do want to get to the pub. And also as well, you've, I've played that game before and you've said to somebody, right, you move and see who moves. And no one moved. And they felt really unpopular. So, uh, so I'm not going to ever do that again. <laughs> they were really into it as well. And no one moves to note because no one picked them. So why did that work? So infinity. You said infinity. Why did it work? Why, how, did, how did we get to 47 seconds? Crystallisation. Everyone's doing it once. Chris, what do you mean crystallisation? No? It's an annealing process. Everybody acts at the same time and it just comes together. Okay, good. Yeah, anything else? It's simple rules. Mm -hmm. Yes, good. Anything else? Just one more, two more? Limited amount of space. Limited amount of space, yep. Yeah. So, we all understood the overall perspective. Perfect. Do you know, this feels great standing up here with a beer, yes. even though I've just, <laughs> just discovered it's the non alcoholic one. <laughs> I was, like, I was going for street cred. It doesn't work. This is how it worked. So we want to move to, to uh, uh, um, sort of project managers and, uh, and development teams leading the way to self-organising teams. You know, these, these organisations, these people that do adult social care or they do children's social care or they do housing or whatever. You know, has anyone heard of Burtzorg in, in Holland? Uh, Burtzorg is, a, is, a, is an organisation in Holland that pretty much runs adult social care now and it's based on a principle of self-organising uh, self structures, self-organising teams that work in almost like cell division. So you'll have a number of people that work in an area and instead of saying, you know, you've got 15 minutes to give that person their dinner, you've got 15 minutes to make sure that person gets to bed tonight, actually, you know what, Matt, just go in, do it, when it's done, go. And this organisation just lives on this principle of self-organisation, it's two, two and a half thousand people with like 26 managers, it's, it's crazy and it works and the reason it works is this, uh, a bit of a yin and yang model there and somebody said simple rules, it's exactly what happens, you add an explicit objective and an implicit purpose, you add defined boundaries, somebody said, you said defined boundaries but people's skill and will unambiguous feedback, you weren't allowed to talk, but you were feeding back to each other. You were able to communicate. And also, as well, you had an ambiguity, to ambiguity tolerance. You had no idea why I should do this, but you kind of go, oh, let's give it a go. And there were a few simple rules, but with a freedom to act. Now, going back to sort of Dan Pink, he'd probably go, yeah, that's what I said a long time ago. But kind of, uh, uh, this was from uh, Nick Oblinsky, who, uh, uh, um, whose kind of, uh, line of line of thought is, who really needs managers? Uh, and it gets people to play this game to explore that concept. And so, uh, yeah, that's the, that's the sixth point in, in, in our approach, of which looks like that. Uh, Recognise that we deal with complexity, change the fundamentals, use agile and adaptive leadership, involve people who feel the pain, start prototyping straight away, focus on practical behaviour change, and move towards self-organisation. <gasps> that was me. Thanks. I'm done.